had a question from a new reseller last week that I thought would be a good topic to talk about for 30 seconds, a minute or so, and we're gonna do it later in this video. And that's how to get a few quick sales, how to get some quick sales to get some feedback rating and to get that stuff up for some of these new resellers. So I was outside feeding the chickens and I thought I'd just do the intro out here for a change. How you doing chickens? They wanna see you. I don't know all your names like Reagan does, so I'm sorry everybody, <laughs> but there they are. Hello everybody, welcome into the cabin here. We've got a few good sales today, which I'm excited to show you as always. And we're also gonna take a look at a way to get some quick sales. I suppose it's really for new sellers to get some quick sales and to maybe get that feedback up, but it applies to everybody. And for the sake of the video, I ran it today too, just to see if we could do it. So without further ado, let's take a look. I sold one of our old standbys, the Electrolux power nozzle. I usually part these things out. This one was particularly dirty and I'm like, you know, I don't really feel up to going in here and cleaning this thing out like I normally would. So I just kind of wiped it down a little bit, took pictures and said, hey, I'm putting it out there for a little better price and it is what it is. <laughs> so I just didn't want to do it. 25 bucks plus shipping. I would sometimes get as much as 40 for these if they're really in really good condition, the brushes are cleaned inside and everything. I just didn't feel like going through the trouble. But 25 bucks plus shipping, I think I paid like 20 bucks, 25 bucks maybe for the whole box of tons of different stuff. And so this one right here breaks us even pretty much on it. And the rest of the stuff is pure profit. I think I've sold one or two pieces already. I had a viewer sale right here and these are going out the door. 13 bucks plus shipping for these, I think combined. This was a... A couple of patches I had multiples of, so I figured it was worth listing. This is Uncle Sam Council. So Mohawk District in, I don't know, somewhere in New York. <laughs> At any rate, and this is an Ernie Irvin hat. Well, unverified, but it's an Ernie Irvin hat right here, uh, signed right here. So there you go. Happy to make the sale and thank you, Brian. Always nice to sell something to a viewer. He says thank you and he's a fan of the channel. So thank you, Brian, appreciate it. All right, I often sell Bibles, but I rarely sell Bibles that weigh as much as the Ten Commandments do. <laughs> this thing is enormous, and I can't even remember how much it weighs, but it weighs a bunch. But the beautiful thing here is it's going media mail, and it's an atlas, and it's pretty cool. I spent quite a bit of time inside looking at it. It's got a DVD with it, or a CD-ROM, I guess is what it is with it, bonus CD-ROM. Incredible illustrations in this thing. I'm like, somebody's going to buy this for a coffee table, something like that. And I figured it was just going to be an easy seller. You can often find things like this, as big as this is, for just a couple of bucks here and there. Maybe even in a book sale where all the books are one price. And this is a book, so it sold for $15.95 plus shipping. So it's not too bad. It's going to make a little bit of profit. Certainly better than maybe uh, you know dropping it off at the Goodwill, I suppose. I think what I'm going to do with that one is I think I'll put one layer of the thin bubble wrap around it and then I'll just wrap it in cardboard, I think is how I'm gonna ship that thing. I've got just a couple of things in here, maybe three or four left in here, and then I wanna talk about the topic of the day for just about 30 seconds or a minute or so. Well, you know me, it'd probably be about a minute and a half. And we'll talk a little bit about how to get a couple of quick sales if you either need the capital, if you need the money really quickly for something else, or if you're just trying to get some sales to get some feedback up. First item is back here. I have like a special tote that I put like office supplies in. And I usually sell staplers and I usually sell them pretty quickly. These staplers did not sell quickly. And I did sell one finally, but there's a few in here. All right, I've got some other, sometimes I'll, this is a great little auction by the way. I decided to put it on auction. Sometimes I'll put auction stuff just real quick in here because it's an auction and it'll definitely sell within the next few days, of course. The Warhammer stuff. I took the easy way out on this. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but this was just absolutely, you know, haphazard. I paid like five bucks for a whole box full of stuff. And this is three of the four pieces that were in it. And they were all mixed up and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think I want to go through the trouble of figuring it all out and independently listing it. So I just decided, you know what? I'm going to take some pictures and list them all at once. I only paid five bucks. But Warhammer stuff, if you ever find it, is usually pretty good money. But I put it right there to get it out of the way. But now I gotta grab this. So you'll see there's one, two, three, four staplers in here. I think this is the one that sold. 
I'll pick them up if they're like a buck, maybe two, because they used to sell for 15, 16 bucks plus shipping, and I figured it was worth it. This one I think went for 13 plus shipping. I take it back, it went for 12 plus shipping. So I think I discounted that thing. It took a long time. A lot of times those things used to sell for $15.95 plus shipping, but not so much anymore, I guess. Which kind of makes sense now that I think about it. Not as many people are working in offices, old school offices. So maybe that's why it didn't sell. Something to think about when I'm out there sourcing next year. So I've got two things over here. One is a Hooters record, if I can find it, which I probably shouldn't have even listed not really worth the money it was like five bucks plus shipping maybe a little 4.95 or something i can't quite remember if i can find it but whatever we're you know we're into them for like 20 cents a piece so it's not that big of a deal there it is hooters <laughs> love the outfits check those out man that's good stuff right there so five bucks plus shipping on that one you know, with the materials and the cost and the fees, it's only going to make like $3. And it takes a little time to package them up, so not really worth it. But, I don't know. I kind of like it. I like selling old media for some reason. Speaking of old media, where's the right? Here it is. Davy Jones. Davy Jones. The monkeys, sort of, right? Not really. It's just Davy Jones with his shirt cut down to here. I picture him with that beard like Davy Jones on Pirates of the Caribbean. Which gets me thinking about some history that I'm going to resist for the time being anyway. So here we go. Davy Jones. This 8-track did pretty good, I think. $15 plus shipping on this 8-track. And I bought it at a yard sale. It was the only thing I bought. I think I paid like a buck for it. Sold it for $15 plus shipping. It's in good shape as far as 8-tracks go. I like it. Next one is right up here. Lots of little sales today. Lots of media, lots of little sales. Nothing amazing here at all. So... Um, not a whole big money maker of a day, but still, you know, even with this stuff right here, you're still gonna make some money. But I guess we got more sales to go. Here we go. WWF right here, WrestleMania, Collector's Edition WrestleMania. The Macho Man, Andre the Giant, who's that? Jake the Snake right there. And who else we got? Hillbilly Jim in there. You see Hillbilly Jim? There's the Iron Sheik. Let's see, Junkyard Dog maybe? Can't quite tell. I don't know. Most of y'all don't care anyways. I, I'm intrigued by that stuff. I remember back in the day, and some of y'all may remember, there's Mr. Wonderful Paul Under. You probably remember if you're as old as me. I remember going to the grocery store, not only to rent the VHS, but to actually rent the VCR. <laughs> and I remember doing that. And then not too long after that, after we had our own VCR, we'd go to the movie store. And we'd rent, uh, I mean, my brother would rent wrestling stuff all the time. And now some of those are worth some good money. This is not, however, one of them, but it is cool. And we got $7.99 plus shipping for this. And I think a viewer bought it. Yep, this one's going to Mike. He says, had to get this, takes me back to my childhood, which I think I just relived that for you. Do you remember renting the actual VCR? <laughs> How many, leave a comment below if you remember renting a VCR. Not the VHS, but the VCR. And those things were heavy back then. Thank you for everything, Kevin, and hope you, Blue Ridge Mama, Reagan Turner, and Bubba have a great week. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. I just got done telling Turner, I said, I don't think they're going to like it with you sitting in that chair and not the classic blue chair, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What'd you say about that chair right there? It matches the shed. It does match the shed. I love that chair. Love it. <laughs> All right, what's old? Uh, Rugrats watch. Rugrats watch right there. Pretty cool. It's like new in package. It's Tommy and Dill. There you go. Pretty cool. I don't remember what I paid for, bud. I know I got it at the 100 mile garage sale. This year, are you going to go to the 100 mile garage sale with me? Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? You told me you wanted to do something. What do I you wanted do? a backpack strap and put my GoPro 7 <laughs> on the big crap. Oh, uh, you do. And you know what? Bubba just asked me if he could, if he could pay me for the GoPro 7. So should I sell him the GoPro 7? Sell who? Make up? Make <laughs> yeah, up? I told him, I said, I already gave it to Turner. He's like, seriously? I'm like, yeah, I gave it to Turner. And he's like, no, you didn't. I said, yeah, I did. Didn't I give it to you? Yep. <laughs> he's not happy about that. <laughs> oh, well. All right, so you're going to have to wear that shirt. Maybe we should get Reagan to go out with us, too. We could all wear the GoPro. <laughs> People think we're nuts. All right, 15 bucks plus shipping. I probably didn't pay a buck or two, but I'm not quite sure. 
Thanks, buddy. Enough for you to do what? Save it all, spin it all, and donate it all. You got it. And some money left over on top of it. Thanks. Bye. All right, if you need some quick sales, for whatever reason, if you need some quick sales, one strategy to do is just send out blanket offers. So I've kind of been experimenting with a little bit. So if you're a viewer of the channel and you save my store, if you've saved some items, you've probably seen a few offers come your way. I know Matt Part-Time Pickers does this from time to time. I had uh, saved a few things on his store and he sent some offers out. He didn't know he was sending them to me. And so you may have seen some of those coming from me. And it really was for the purpose of this video. So I uh, maybe tomorrow I'll talk about some things that sold off of this. But you can send offers, independent offers, of course. And most of you know how to do that because it says eligible for offers. But if you go to the Seller Hub and want to send out blanket ones, you can definitely do that too. So you go to the Seller Hub and you go to eligible listings or listings that are eligible to send an offer. You click the X or not the X, you click the check mark where it says actions. And if you want to send it to all of them, you just click that check mark at the top and it'll populate the entire field of every item that's eligible to send an offer. Now you may want to go through there because there may be some items you don't want to send an offer for. Then you're going to click send the actual offer. So send offer and that won't send it immediately because you're going to have to put the percentage in there. So if you're just looking for some quick sales, but you don't really want to take a big hit on the amount of money you're getting, you know, you just put in 5% and you'll send out an offer at 5% off of that. Now I usually don't do this very often. I will do it with particular items from time to time, but I very rarely send out that blanket one. And the reason I don't is because I usually wait till items are on my in my store for like a year before I do that. Now, some people are like, that's crazy. <laughs> I get it. But you got to understand that I'm not full time and that I'm not always turning over inventory all the time. So that's kind of how I work it. It works for me. I think if I had a different model like a lot of you do, I think I would do it a little bit differently. I know a lot of people who use the strategy of send offers. They literally overprice their items by 10 to 20% and then wait till they get a few people watching the item and then they send that 10% that off or 20% off. You know, human psychology is a big, big deal. It's why you go to the mall <laughs> if anybody goes to the mall anymore and everything's always on sale permanently, right? That's just kind of how our minds work sometimes. So overprice it and send an offer sometimes this isn't a bad strategy. All right, before I talk about that Redskin shirt, I just can't resist talking about Davy Jones for just a second. Not this Davy Jones, but the, you know, the, the Pirates of the Caribbean. I loved Pirates of the Caribbean growing up. You know, I lived not too far from Disneyland. My folks grew up in Fullerton and Buena Park and a bunch of places down there. And so they had the Disney thing when they were kids. And then of course we would go, we were probably just within an hour where I lived of Disneyland. So I loved it. I was always enamored by Pirates of the Caribbean. I love that ride and all kinds of stuff like that. So took my kids back there a few years back just because I wanted to go. <laughs> and so when the pirate stuff came out, you know, as a history teacher, you're always looking for things that will help you impart something to the students that you have that's relatable. So back then, everybody was Pirates of the Caribbean. And so I'd use it all the time to teach things. AP world type stuff. And you tell these interesting stories to get them hooked. And then you hit them with the, the, the history that they wouldn't care about, right? And the history that they wouldn't care about is for AP world, you have to understand the different technologies that got people around the world in different time periods, whether it's something as simple as a donkey or a camel in the earlier time, time periods, or whether later on you had to understand the Arab Dows, their ships, the Chinese junk, junks, don't get dirty right there. That's a ship, y'all. And the, uh, the the caravel, like the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, or the flute. And so Pirates of the Caribbean, the Dutch ship, the Lost Dutchman, you know, Davy Jones, that was a flute. That was a massive trading vessel by the Dutch, obviously the Lost Dutchman. And so we tie in Davy Jones and all that. And so I'd learn a little bit about things that I didn't quite know about. And Davy Jones is an interesting story. You know, the idea of like, I don't know what you want to call them, like the devil of the oceans or, or whatever you want to call them. But that's one of those stories that has no origin. Well, it has an origin. We just don't know what the origin is. And so I think it's an interesting story and I would use it to go and teach. Well, I guess I didn't tell the story, but let's just say that there are a few different theories about how this idea of Davy Jones comes to be. I think the two that are most popular are the one, at least the ones that I think are interesting 
is that it actually goes back, and you can see this, I think the earliest it was uh, Daniel Defoe, is that his name? A Robinson Crusoe guy? I think that's right. And that's probably 18th century. I hope I'm right on that one. And he references Davy Jones in one of his books. And not in Robinson Crusoe, I don't believe. I don't know what book it is. But at any rate, it's an interesting story where he is the first person that we know of historically that references this Davy Jones. But just because it's referenced there doesn't mean it originates there. As a matter of fact, it's not explained there, which means it has its origins in an earlier history. And sailors are an interesting group of folks. So some people say it dates back to somebody named Davy Jones who owned a pub and would literally take the drunk sailors because, you know, that's what sailors do, right? <laughs> Drink and do something else, but we're not going to talk about that. And they take those drunk sailors and he would lock them up. And then he would sell them off to captain, pirate captains. And so that Davy Jones locker. The other one actually is biblical and dates back to Jonah, Davy Jones. And of course, you know, have, have pirates that are speaking different languages. And so that can kind of get transliter transliterated all the time. And maybe the idea of Jones came from Jonah where it's bad luck and they threw him overboard. And, you know, he was in the fish and all that stuff. The biblical idea of a bad luck sailor. Um, and, and being drowned and all that stuff. But at any rate, I'm going a little far afield, but I figured since we had Davy Jones to talk about, we'd talk about that for a second. And I don't have that many solds here today, so didn't have a huge day of sales, which is okay. I've been really bogged down at work and haven't listed much. I've only listed one thing today, so I better shut up and tell you about this one. All right, here we go. So Redskins, you know, I've been yelled at in so many videos on, con you didn't pick up the Redskins stuff. You didn't pick up this. You didn't pick up that. And I'm like, I know I pick up some Redskin stuff and some of it sells and some of it's just not that good. And I picked this one up really to make the point that it's not that great. And then it never, ever sold, which kind of made my point, but it did sell 15 bucks. So this cost 50 cents at a sale sold for 15 bucks. It's just, it's a women's Team Apparel, nothing special. Fifteen dollars for this thing, paid fifty cents. So let's do some quick math. Let's say in fees and shipping, it's six bucks, although it's going to be a little less than that. Actually, it's probably going to be right around five fifty. And so we're going to add that to our fifty cent buy right here. There we go. And that makes six bucks. So you sell it for fifteen. You know, you're throwing in packaging and whatnot, but we're talking pennies right here. So. Let's see, 15 bucks minus six, you're gonna make a $9 profit. On the low end, you're gonna make an $8 profit if you uh, you know, have to calculate every single little thing in here like mileage and whatnot. So you're gonna make like a $9 profit on something like this. So that's not too bad, but it's not like out of this world good, but I'll take it. Now, if you find something like that vintage Logo 7 heavy, like Letterman's type jacket that I found, you pick that stuff up, but you'd pick that up for any team any didn't matter if it was the logo ending or any of that stuff. I think the cap guy ended up getting that from us. So at any rate, I don't know if he ever sold it though. I think he was buying it as an investment. Have you ever sold it out there, cap guy? And I have to splice this in. I got so busy talking about Davy Jones that I forgot about a sale. So here we go. Freedom from want, Norman Rockwell. This one sold for $9.95 plus shipping into it for just pennies. So I'm happy with those. I love these kind of sales. Love them. Hey, I gotta wait for Reagan to get home before we do those outside sales. I hope to get her on here, but she'll be home late today. Hey, we hope your sales are going great out there. What's your best sale? I haven't asked this. I try to ask it every week or so. What's your best sale in the last seven days? Let me know in the comments. Y'all have a great day. See you next time. All right, y'all. It's kind of late tonight. Reagan just got back from yeah. gymnastics, so I've already packaged up everything, and it's ready to go. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and so she's just going to give some thank yous real quick. Go ahead. Damn. Derek, Teresa, Christine, Katie, and Dan. And he said... So two Dans? Yeah. Okay. Lots of Ds. Dan, D, Derek. I know. <laughs> what was the other one? Oh, that was it. Dan, D, Derek, and Dan. Oh, two Dans. There you go. All right. What do you got? Uh, he said, thank you guys so much. My wife and I don't really have a lot of, lot of family, and we enjoy watching you sell with yours. We buy storage lockers and sell part-time. I just can't sell magnetic... Backgammon pieces, lol. <laughs> Thanks again, Dan. <laughs> all right, Dan. Thank you all so much. And they bought all kinds of stuff. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. They, I mean, some people bought the old Animan shirt, the new Animan shirt, the new Animug, the stickers. They bought yeah. all kinds of stuff. So thank you all so much. Bye.
bag and don't forget to get your stickers at commonwealthpicker.com. Hey, this is what I mean. Wrap it like a, a Christmas present with cardboard. There you go. 18 pounds. 18.4. <laughs> That's how I did it. That's that giant Bible. I guess I should have told you that to begin with. A giant Bible right there. It's going medium mail, so it is what it is. Hey, real quick, I got a nice letter today. Southern Vermont. There you go. So I will definitely put that card up. No promises as far as checking out your store. Um, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but I get so many requests to check out stores. Occasionally I do, but I basically uh, don't do much of that. I know some people charge to look at stores, etc., etc. But I just don't have time. My eBay is also vintage stuff. In other words, it's kind of like... I like this stuff. <laughs> so that was very kind of you to send this message. I am very thankful. And we will definitely put it back here, Alan. We're going to put it right back here on this bulletin board somewhere. I don't know where exactly. There you all are. I had to cover some things up every once in a while, I suppose. But we'll put this up here. Thanks.